I turn my small spare room into the world's fastest YouTube production studio to teach you how to set up and film videos in under 15 seconds that look like this. But not only that, I also threw in an easy to use thumbnail wall, managed to eliminate tons of kit to save you loads of space. And the best thing about this is the entire setup can be controlled at the touch of a button. Because I figure when it comes to YouTube, time and space is probably one of the things you struggle with the most. But it doesn't have to be, and it doesn't have to cost the earth to fix either. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to build your very own high-speed space saving YouTube studio. So where do you start if you want sub 15 second setup times without sacrificing quality? Well, you start with a pen and some paper or a laptop. Either way, you need to write a list of what's important for you in that room. So you can eliminate anything that isn't, giving you more space, which will allow you to make videos faster. So for this project, it's really all about space and speed, but you might want to add more to your own too. Now the next step is more planning to organize what needs to go into that room. Now I found this cool software where you draw out the room and then you can play around with different furniture setups. Now this was great because it made it really obvious that there was only one way we could actually arrange the room without windows and doors being in shot all the time. So then we have your mood board. And this is where you're going to plan the look of your video's background. Now because Film Booth has a color scheme, I want to incorporate that into my shot somehow, but this can cause a bit of a problem. You see, I took the same approach to the room last time I painted it, and I went with yellow as it matched my side business's branding. But the thing is, when the light bounces off the yellow, it bounces back like a yellowy light, which goes on your skin, which makes you kind of look all mucky. So what I decided to do this time was only paint the wall behind me a color, and then make the rest of the room white, as that should make my skin look more natural as light bounces off it around the room. And then the next thing to think about is, what do you actually want behind you? And because my space is small, I decided that I'm just gonna keep it simple. And I looked at a light to feature in the background, as well as some kind of green plant, which I was hoping, when blurred out, would look kind of groovy. Really? Now the next step is to buy the stuff that's on the mood board, along with some space saving gadgets and gizmos that I'm going to get to in a minute. And then we just need to paint the room. It took two days. And now we need to address something that's actually quite serious. This is my smartwatch and it tells you how many steps that you do a day. And it turns out that on a good day I do about 3,000 steps, but often I only do 1,000. And if you don't know, you're supposed to do 10,000 steps a day for your health. Now this is because I spend so much time writing and editing and sitting at a desk and not moving increases your chances of getting diabetes, obesity, and also heart problems. And I know that there are tons of creators out there who might actually be in a similar situation to me. But there is a really simple fix here and that is just to move more. And you can do that with one of these, a height adjustable desk. <laughs> It'll fix your posture and it's gonna help fight off some of those nasty health issues that I spoke about. And this is the bit that I'm really excited about. So I bought like these cheap pole thingies that you can attach things to off Amazon and you just clamp them to the desk like this. And then I've put a camera on this one and then a cheap ring light on this one. And then I've popped my mic on the desk on a little stand. So all I have to do if I wanna frame myself is push this button here and look. Everything moves for me. And then I can just grab a chair. Nah, still not right. Never mind, just push my desk button. Oh. And the great thing is, because everything is attached to the desk, there's nothing on the floor, so there's more room. Now the pole thingies, they were really cheap. So even if you don't have a fancy robot desk like me, it's still 100% worth getting. And also it gets better. I have a capture card, which goes into the back of my computer, which basically turns this camera into a webcam. So I can monitor myself and see what's on screen here all the time, which makes framing things super easy. It also means I can look it up to YouTube Lives, Zoom, and then watch this. Let's take some thumbnail photos. Because of the plain wall, I just raise my desk, don't have to move anything. I can take the photos and the plain background makes it really easy to cut myself out after to use in the thumbnails. And again, I can see this all happening on the screen on my computer, so I'm always aware of how ridiculous and annoying my thumbnail faces are. The thing is, we don't just want speed, we want quality too. So now let's look at creating some different setups, starting with my first one, the super lazy one. Now this light here, you can position in many different ways, but I like to have it about 45 degrees from where the camera is. And what that does is, Gives me this nice bright face here and then a nice slight shadow come around here and then it looks cool. Now, because I decided to paint all of the walls white in front of me, the light to the side of the camera is actually bouncing off this wall and it's causing a bit of fill in here. So usually you would have a second light up there that wasn't quite as bright that fills in some of the darkness so it doesn't look too dramatic or too harsh. But because of my tiny room and being close to this white wall, it means I can have this effect with one light. But at the same time, if I do want a harsher shadow, quite easily just pop this dark picture on the wall. But look at the difference. So we've got the dark here blocking out the light and then when I take it away can you see that there's more fill on my face darker 
that's darker. <laughs> oh, actually, I think that's a little bit too much bounce. So the perfect place was actually just to hang this on the wall. And that's given me the exact kind of look I wanted, which is super convenient because that picture was always on the wall. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a light behind me pointing up at the wall. And hey presto, we have our first look sorted. But will I be able to set it up in under 15 seconds? Well stay tuned to find out and hit subscribe. Now I'm not gonna lie, this purple was not quite what I wanted. I'd recommend you buy a small testing pot before you paint the entire wall. Unfortunately, I didn't have the time. But this is a real easy fix. So I've spoken about these cheap colored lights before. <laughs> so I'm just gonna position them behind me and then Whee. All right, and now we've got some more vibrancy, right? But it's a little bit too vibrant. So I can change the entire color of the wall too, if I like and I think that looks pretty cool. So let's move on to lazy look number two. I'm just gonna add the things I put on my mood board earlier and create a slightly different set. Okay, so the light's kind of working there, but the plant's not really doing anything. Now I could have just pointed another light at the plant and that would have solved the problem, but I don't want another light in the room because that's more floor space and more setup. So let's try something else. All right, so it's a little bit kind of sex dungeon-y. That is working nice. So something we need to talk about here is the look that I've created is down to the lens and lenses was making everything behind me blurry and this is really important if you have a small room and you don't necessarily have much room behind you you can still get this blur so long as your lens has the ability to have a low aperture so often on a lens you'll see these little f numbers knocking around the side this one here says 3.5 to 5.6 now the lower that number the more you can blur stuff behind you so right now as you can see i'm about an inch away from the wall and if we look at this lens with a low f stop you can see it's still blurred so even if you only have a very small amount of room behind you, you can still achieve that look. But ideally, the more depth behind you, the more blur that you can get. But I guess the question is, can I go from this to this in under 15 seconds? Well, let's find out. On your marks, get set, go. Camera on. Light on. Lights blind. Light on. Light on. Adjust the desk! Not bad, right? And although this isn't quite exactly the look I'd hoped for, it still looks great, but at the end of the day, it's just so flipping easy to use and a complete time saver. And if you like time saving, then you're gonna love this video here because it's gonna shave hours off how long it takes you to edit a video.